Hi, this is Captain Drew Cavanaugh with Florida Inshore Fishing Charters, Mosquito Lagoon Site Fishing Charters, located here in East Central Florida on the world famous, beautiful Mosquito Lagoon, Indian River Lagoon system in New Smyrna Beach, Cocoa Beach, and Daytona, just east of Orlando. And today, this is the first part of the seven part series that I'm going to do over how to catch redfish, trout, and black drum. The video that uh, was before this one was the introduction, basically an overview of what the seven parts are going to be like, what to expect and how to do. Um, like I said in the previous video, this video is not going to show you the exact spots where to fish in the area, but it's going to be a blueprint, just like a house blueprint on how to, how to catch these fish and the process in doing it. You can pretty much take this information and apply it anywhere that these three species, the black drum, the, the spotted sea trout, and the red drum exist, or redfish. Um, we're going to go over two things real quick here in this series. Uh, this first part is going to be very basic. It's going to be rules and regulations and species. The first thing, let's talk about the species. Uh, the main species out here are the drum family. Uh, and believe it or not, there's four species that's included in this that most people don't usually talk about, but they're known in the surf for those surf fishermen, and that's whiting is one of them, spotted sea trout, black drum, and of course the redfish or red drum. Those are all part of the drum family. Uh, the three main targeted ones out here on the lagoon system and in Florida are sea trout, redfish, and black drum. Now I want to mention something uh, real quick about uh, these fish in this area. Treat these fish like game fish and they'll give you, and sport fish, and they'll give you years of pleasure to, to um, exist for the future of you and your kids and just the future of the rest of the fishermen. So, you know, like a lot of bass fishermen, they treat them as sport fish. So just keep that in mind over the series and when you're going out there and doing that. Um, these I treat these as game fish and sport fish. Uh, this is a sport fishing paradise. All of the charters out there are all catch and release inside the wildlife refuge in the Mosquito Lagoon. And it's one of the best places to fish on Earth. Um, so I digress here. So with these three species that we're going to target, that, that out here in this video that we're going to target, and going over their feeding habits in the next video, um, what to look for, so on and so forth, um, redfish grow anywhere between one pound to 10, 15 pounds on average out here. Uh, yeah, you'll get some bigger ones. The big bulls are out there roaming, you know, 20, 30 pounders. Eh, once in a while, maybe a 40 pounder. Um, this is one place where the fish live their entire lives. They don't really migrate out into the Atlantic once they're uh, um, a certain size. They start to uh, breed and spawn in the deeper waters of the Indian River and some of the deep waters of the Mosquito Lagoon, and um, which is very unique. It's a sight to see. Uh, it's just, it's a marvelous, marvelous place to fish. You have black drum. The black drum are notorious crustacean eaters. They roam in massive schools. Uh, redfish roam in massive schools. They also roam in singles. Um, drum typically are, I consider them more of a schooling fish. You'll get some of the bigger ones hanging around pilings and whatnot, but typically they're a schooling fish, mostly feeding on shrimp, crabs, crustacean snails. Uh, they're not normally chasing mullet on the flats like you would sea trout or redfish. Um, now let's talk about spotted sea trout real quick here. Spotted sea trout, one of my favorite fish to go after. There's just one thing I wish I could say about them. I wish they were a game fish. Unfortunately, here in the state of Florida, the state of Florida has not classified as, as, as has not classified them as a game fish as of yet. Um, so there is commercial harvest of them. Uh, just like the black drum, I wish black drum were classified as a game fish, and it would be a loophole for the commercial fishermen not to be able to target these. Because uh, when you're allowed to take 500 pounds a day and 50 whatever it is, whatever the commercial rules are on those fish, it, it, it sends recreational anglers ballistic. So if you want to do one thing on a side note, send the your governor, send the state of Florida FWC an email with your thoughts in making them a game. Um, just like largemouth bass, redfish, tarpon, I mean, why not? Uh, you'll still have your recreational laws to follow, but uh, there's just no sense. I don't know about you, but when was the last time you went to your local store here in Central Florida or somewhere and saw black drum for sale or spotted sea trout for sale? You know, it'd be different if it brought the money back here to the economy, but that's just my personal opinion. I believe there's a lot of you out there that follow that opinion with me. So, why well, digress here? So those are the three species that we're going to talk about here. Spotted sea trout, also known as gator trout, you'll hear them said as that. Uh, weak fish sometimes, different species but close. Uh, black drum, 
or drum, you'll hear people say, hey, I'm going drum fishing. See, to me, that means black drum, but in other states, that might be redfish also. Uh, red drum, redfish, channel bass, bull redfish, redfish. Uh, you'll hear the word bull redfish. The state of Florida, and I think even on Wikipedia, they consider a bull redfish, according to their, these sites and these scientists, anything over 27 inches. Personally, most of us guides out here consider bull redfish the upper 30s and over, uh, mainly the females. Redfish typically stop growing at a certain length and they'll just gain girth. I think a buddy, a colleague of mine, caught a redfish the other day that was, oh, I forget, it was 40-some inches long, and we did some research and found out it was, uh, I think it was 43, 44 inches long, found out that it was um, maybe 23 years old, 21 years old. Uh, hard to, it's hard to tell unless you kill it, and you t I think it's the ear bone they got to examine. I'm not really sure. I'm not a scientist. Uh, so anyhow, that's the three species we're going to target. In the next video series, I'll go over their habitat in more depth and in detail. This is just a quick overview on the three that we're going to target and talk about. The next thing, let's talk about rules and regulations. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do uh, rules and regulations if you hire a guide and then rules and regulations real quick for you. Let's do the rules and regulations if you hire a guide. Out here, I'm going to specifically talk about me in this area because this is what I do. I'm not going to talk about somebody else. If you hire a guide and he's going to fish the Mosquito Lagoon, in the, uh, the Canaveral National Seashore, the Maritime Wildlife Refuge, those are within federal waters. Inside the federal waters, for us to work out there, we either have what's a, uh, called a CUA permit, Commercial Business Permit, and that allows us to do commercial activities inside the National Park and Wildlife Refuge. You can go to Canaveral National Seashore's website, look on their permit side, and it'll say authorized guides in the area. I beg you, if you hire a guide out here, whether it's me, or one of these other guides that work out here. They work hard to get their licenses, pay the insurance, pay their dues. Do not hire a fishing guide out here that does uh, pirate pirate charters, is like what we like to call them. Guides that say they fish the Mosquito Lagoon, and they don't, they're not on the park list, they're not authorized to be out there. If you got questions, call the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, call the Canaveral National Seashore um, down in Titusville, and say, hey, I'm wanting to hire such and such. Is he permitted to be out there? Just good business practice, just like in any business. It's, it's only fair. So with that said, let's move to the um, regulations real quick on recreational. This is a, this is going to be real easy to do. I am not going to talk about the regulations for recreational because I don't need somebody saying, Hey, Captain Drew said this. He said this, officer. I know I'm in the right. Go to F my FWC's website. Download the set of the rules and regulations yourself. You look at them, you're responsible, just like driving down the road. You know, ignorance is no excuse for the law. One thing I will say, if you are fishing the Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge in the Canaveral National Seashore, if you're to have a self-issuing permit with you, you can get it at the Wildlife Refuge down here, or you can go online to Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge website. Uh, it's basically a free permit. It just goes, explains some rules and regulations. You sign it, self-issuing. It's got a map on there. It goes over certain rules. Uh, just, uh, you know, they have rules aside of the state of Florida's rules. So you're supposed to have that with you at all times. Um, I highly suggest that you study the rules and laws and um, you don't want to get caught. You want to do something, especially one thing out here, if we have a pull and troll zone out here where there's no motors allowed inside there, um, no combustion engines rather, and you always get somebody that just runs through there and destroys it for everybody else that's pulling around um, and it's in this rule it's in this set of rule right here and it explains it very well so when you sign that if you're caught out there you can't say well I didn't know because they're gonna say well did you sign the rules and you read them so just don't sign it put it in your pocket read it so the next video series that we're gonna do is gonna be over we're gonna go over in the next few videos habitat area tackle selection and means and all that um, the best way if you want to keep up on when the next one comes out might be a couple of weeks might be a week uh, a lot of these videos require a lot of editing the next ones are gonna be a little bit more difficult to do and more more detail I should say subscribe to my channel you'll be notified when the next one comes out and we'll go from there so again this is Captain Drew Cavanaugh of Florida Inshore Fishing Charters I look forward to the next one everybody have a great day thank you